This video is a live recording of how I got coached by our challenger head coach Maxime, so you can see for yourself what these coaching sessions are all about. If you like what you see, you can book your own one-on-one -on -one coaching calls starting from the 28th of November, which is our official launch date. But for now, lean back and enjoy. I'm going to be recording your gameplay. So you're, you're just going to be playing, you know, like live game, etc. And we're going to do a VOD review right after. But first, you know, like uh, in the video, so that it makes sense, we're going to quickly go over your PG and talk about you as a player. So if, for example, like, you know, what you struggle on, what you're good at, uh, what do you feel like is the problem? And then we can talk about the OPG itself. So can I, yes. can I have like, um, can I have your OPG? Yes, I'm looking it up right now so I can send it to you. Awesome. And I'll also drag it to my primary screen so the viewer can see. All right, Mr. 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 I'm currently on your PDG. I'm going to be streaming it and we're going to talk about it and go through uh, some of your games, etc. So we're on only going to be picking out like the, the solo queue games. Um, well, from what I can see, you're like a misfortune one trick. So what exactly is your thought process when you're like building misfortune? Because I see like a lot of different setups. Yes. And uh... so, um, well, as you can see from my OPGG, yeah, as you've said, I'm a misfortune one trick. Also, I mean, you can see it from my name. And with the builds, I always have this feeling that people are too blindly following stat websites. You know, they just see, okay, this has the highest pick rate and win rate looks nice, and they completely blindly just walk into this trap and follow what uh, whatever is popular right now which stales the meta and a lot of builds are flying under the radar as a consequence. And I mean, of course, I'm in this uh, almost weird position of a content creator. So of course, there's incentive for me to experiment because I want to be able to show the audience uh, what might be good and what um, might be un yet undiscovered. So I experiment a lot. However, this I mainly do on Smurf accounts. On my main accounts, I only bring the builds uh, of which I truly think that they have potential. So, um, for example, right now, what you can see, this um, Presti Attack Duskblade Essence Reaver is what I really like, since, well, it, there was this one Smurf who climbed to Diamond with it with a more than 90% win rate, and I think that's a result that actually speaks for itself. And, uh, yeah, I had a look, and the build makes sense. It's What I like about the build is, I just heard a Discord notification. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can, I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Perfect. So uh, yeah, what I really like about the build is that it shifts, unlike the meta build, the meta build has all its power in Misfortune's ultimates. And when that plan doesn't work, the build doesn't work. But this build also has a lot of power in ultimate, yet still you can do a lot with your auto Q auto combo due to press the attack, due to Essence Reaver. And uh, it's, it's a little more consistent as a result, I would say. So this is why I, for example, played this build here. Okay. 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 Um, I mean, is I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily the the misfortune connoisseur, and you are a pretty a pretty heavy misfortune player. But do you have like a certain like thought process when you're going into a game? For example, like here, you know, I'm gonna go PTA. Here, I'm gonna go uh, summon Airy, or you just like like to run the same kind of build like every single time. So the thing with this is, um, well, I'm to be quite honest, I don't really have that much time to play. As you can probably also see from my match history, I'm not playing that much ranked. When I play, I mainly play because I want to showcase a build of which I think that it's good for a video. But if yeah. I were to play to climb, then um, I would either pick the build from which, or of which I would think it's the best right now, or if there are multiple builds that are, um, in my opinion, competing for this spot of uh, best build, I would then tailor it to my support to have a favorable matchup in lane. For example, uh, there was a time in which uh, multiple Misfortune builds were very strong. We had a strong mm -hmm. Arcane Comet build, uh, even strong Dark Harvest, strong Press the Attack. Uh, so for example, mm -hmm. when I'm with, an, uh, with a poke support like Xerath, I would go Arcane Comets with Emacs. Back then Emacs made sense because the slow increased with uh, level ups. Um, and I would just poke down the enemy lane, win the game that way. If I, however, had a strong all-in support with snowball potential, Dark Harvest mm -hmm. or Presti Attack look a lot more attractive. Um, or if we have a scaling enchanter support, I would just go for a, a late-game-focused crit build so I can scale alongside them. Th these were my general game plans 
um, back in the day when I <laughs> try harded. Okay, sounds good. Um, essentially, I'm going to be explaining like a little bit what you should be looking into when you're going into a game. Because uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be it's going to be very like every single game is going to be different, right? Of course. Um, of course, here I, I understand that you're like, you know, trying to showcase a build, etc. But if we're strictly talking about the climbing side of things, you know, like Misfortune has a lot of different kinds of setups that are uh, very favorable for, for example, you know, like there's different kinds of runes. Like I, I have no doubt that summon area is good. You know, it's good for trading, small, small trades, etc. Um, but we have PTA that's going to be really aggressive. We have Dark Harvest, we have First Strike, etc., and Lethal Tempo, and we have all these all these different kinds of builds. So how exactly do we pick one of them? Well, it's kind of simple. Essentially, if they have poke champions, we basically eliminate uh, First Strike because we, we're not going to be able to proc it reliably. And obviously, it also depends on the support we're having. In this case, we have Ezreal Thresh, so First Strike is out of the question. But you know, you also need to consider uh, all the other champions in the game, right? For example, here we have a Bren, we have an Ari, we have a Camille. So consistent damage would be uh, would be way better in the sense that, for example, like a Lethal Tempo, Kraken Slayer um, with Infinity Edge would be would be pretty good here. Um, if we have like other games here, for example, like we have a Jinx, we have Emilio, and we have Fizz Talon, where they're gonna burst you out pretty hard, right? And we have a we have a Blitzcrank. We're gonna look to get a very very bursty um, kind of setup, and that would make sense, right? Because like essentially all their champions are very very bursty, so you basically gotta burst them before they burst you, right? Um, that's essentially how how I look at things. Um, when it comes to the items, same thing, you know, like how to build your items around the game also depends on pretty much all the champions in the game. Uh, you can't be looking at just the laning phase side of things. You really got to consider like all the champions, you know, like what what support you have, what what the enemy has, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you always got to ask yourself, okay, for this game, do I want to go burst? Do I want to go consistent damage? Do I want to go crit? Do I want to go full lethality burst? Like, what is essentially going to benefit the lane and my team in the in the long in the in the long time of things, right? Yeah. And this this is something you really got to ask yourself. It's obviously not easy because misfortune is not a champion that can only run, you know, like one or two types of runes like we like we just discussed like she can run like a lot of different kinds of setups and i feel like the players will be confused as to what to really take but you know the the good thing about misfortune is that her ad ratios are super super high so what we what we gotta note from this is because she has really really high um ad scalings as for the runes you know like me personally what i would be running <clears throat> is three kinds of setups so the first setup, I wouldn't actually run first strike, even though it seems pretty good, and a lot of people take that. I would run dark harvest, and I would run um, absolute focus, gathering storm every single time. If I want to go burst, I would go lethal tempo. If the game really allows me to, you know, like get those auto attacks in, I have a lot of peeling, like for example, a thresh or Leona, uh, a Nautilus, or something else, right? Or PTA if I want more lane dominance and I need this extra damage to like really, you know, like um, take over the game as quick as possible, right? Yeah, especially with um, the Leona, uh, I would even say press the attack is always better because Leona does have a lot of opportunities for all ins and lane and PTA is still a valuable rune in the late game. Yeah, exactly. And obviously the trading pattern, you know, like we just W, auto attack Q, W, uh, no, I mean W into auto attack Q, auto attack, just really quick and a it's lot, very consistent. A lot of, yeah, yeah. So that's essentially how I would build things. And uh, you know, I feel like if you were really trying to climb here, I feel like you would go like um, different kinds of builds. I personally would not go summon airy, just because you know, like it just doesn't provide enough consistent damage. You know, like for trading, I have no doubt that it's like amazing but i just i just wouldn't really go for that because right now what you're going for is kind of like supportive right 
this like black cleaver is supportive item you know uh, ken punk you know anti-healing is supportive and yes you do get a lot of uh cdr out of it but i just wouldn't think it's the most uh optimal build for for misfortune if you're really trying to like you know climb and look to really take over the game because as we know you know like soul queue is not like pro play in a 5v5 environment where you know like we're we're going to be scaling the of those like 30 minutes mark 40 minutes mark we really want to be taking over the game as fast as possible right and we kind of we kind of see that in your games right here, you know, you played two PTA games, you went really aggressive setups, and you know, it kind of paid off, as opposed to like here where we we're running like the summon airy setups and it didn't really work out as much, you know? The success uh, I mean, rate that's is a just... very, very low sample size with very scoop yeah, data. J just a that's... caveat for everyone listening. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I just, I just want to explain like why, you know, like a more aggressive setup would be more beneficial for the player um, in the long side of things, right? Yeah, I completely understand. But uh, the thing is that some of eerie things started, it's not that I try to be a supportive AD carry um, yeah. in the in the broader sense, but summon eerie is just the most aggressive non press the attack keystone you can get. It has an inherently very low cooldown and the attack damage scaling is the exact same as of Arcane Comet and Dark Harvest and Electrocute, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Uh, it's it's just the most damage, it, simple as that. Even though it looks weird, but that was the idea behind this build. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I see that. I see that. Uh, what about what about Scorch over Gathering Storm? If we're really trying to go aggressive here, Scorch is a very weird choice for Misfortune, especially when you go for lethality builds because Scorch is magic damage. So for mages, mm -hmm. it makes more sense as they build magic penetration. And Misfortune, as you said, has one of the highest AD ratios, I think even the highest bonus AD scaling in the entire game with her ultimate. So yeah. Gathering Storm will outvalue Scorch at the 10 minute mark, and then from there just keep scaling and scaling. It's so crazy in the late game. But there are setups in which Scorch is nice. For example, if you really try to bully them in lane, you still go Emax, even though it's heavily mm. nerfed compared to the past. If you go Emax with a full lethality um, ability haste build, Scorch can mm. make sense because then you'd also take Arcane Comet still even after the nerf. Because Scorch plus Arcane Comet is a lot of poke in lane and Scorch Tick also reduces Arcane Comet cooldown or can even trigger it if it just comes off cooldown. So there's this interaction. But in general, yeah. Gathering Storm is just so crazy on Misfortune and it competes directly with Scorch. Okay. I mean, then you gotta essentially make a choice, right? Do you want more laning power or do you want more like faster scaling like uh starting like in the mid game right yeah essentially it's a choice whether you want more power in the early game or more power in the mid to late game but yeah, yeah. this is the, i mean How this is always the trade-off but uh in the question of scorch versus gathering storm the opportunity cost is just so immensely high just getting scorch for the immensely yeah. valuable rune of gathering storm it's uh it's a really hard commitment so if you don't if you have the team comp of course if you have like a nidali jungle um, at a Jace top lane and whatnot, and just all champions that need to win in the early game. If, if the game goes late, you lose, essentially, then it might be worth it. But, but these are very um, niche matchups. Yeah, that's very true. All right, how about we get into a game, shall we? Of course. All right. So for this game, I will be semi-backseating you in a sense that, you know, I'm not going to control, like, every single of your decisions and movements, but I will be... Uh, telling you like at some key moments like uh, on what to what to do inside the game does that yeah, sound sounds good? good all right cool let's get all right we got a bottom which is good so i picked my misfortune and i mean right now if i were just try harding i would just go in the press the attack build with essence reaver second item but uh, we have we can have a look at this lobby and decide which build would be optimal in this situation right yeah. First of all, what ban would you recommend? I personally ban the strongest soul queue champions. So this specific meta, I like to ban either Draven or Samir, depending on what I'm playing. Um, well, I, I, would I would be try. banning Senna right now because she's still very oppressive. I, yeah. I was still banning Samira, to be honest. Okay, then we're banning Samira if you say so. <laughs> I've I've actually played against like. A lot of Senna's, and I've never had like any real troubles against them. But I've, I've it, it's really like your personal choice, right? Whether you 
whether you if you struggle against her like have no problem like it's it really depends on you right it's just about a you feeling we have a zaya jana it's actually good So this is the rune page I would default for, to for now, but we can change this as the picks progress. Mm -hmm. The Blitzcrank is good. Yeah, Blitzcrank would be good for the strong early power of press the attack and serrate the duck. That's true. Actually, you know, I've been uh, I've been running like Flash Ghost on like pretty much every single game. Um, what do you think about that? Like, even on Misfortune, I feel like it would be it would be pretty nice. Well, I'm I'm an old school player. I like my heal, <laughs> but uh, we can try Ghost if you want to. The thing I like about heal on Misfortune specifically, though, is that uh, heal is very strong in lane. Misfortune is also very strong in lane, which can create a lot of good opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. But we can we can try Ghost if you recommend it. I do. You know, like that's I recommend it because it's really strong in the meta and it's also really strong in solo queue in the sense that you know, like we were talking about, you know, the self sufficient builds. Yeah. And I feel like Ghost is one of those reasons as to why, you know, like it really works in solo queue. Okay. Like even in pro play, you will see them like run Flash Ghost every single time. Hang on, real quick, we have 20 seconds left. So uh, is this rune page fine, what you say? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. Then I will go for it. And I will try Ghost, but keep in mind that mm -hmm. um, I have not really played with Ghost on AD carries all that much, so I might need your help in... Uh, yeah. Or could you explain in which situations should I pop Ghost, and in which situations should I specifically not pop Ghost? Well, that's kind of... It's actually... It's kind of easy in the sense that, you know, like, if you see that your your opponent's, like, kind of in, like, a lot of cooldowns to, like, try to catch you or something, and, you know, like, they miss, like, their abilities or, like, some key abilities, Ghost can really help you get, like, those two, three, four extra auto attacks that can really punish them, or can be used to, like, run away if you're, like, getting ganked or something and just kite your enemy out. It's a lot harder to gank you if you have Ghost than, for example, like if you have Heal, if that makes sense. So, for example, if the enemy, just a general rule of thumb, if the enemy are committing a lot of resources in any certain play, then I can pop Ghost to trade favorably in terms of resource management, right? Yeah, exactly. And because it's like on a lower cooldown than, than Flash, you're essentially using a lot less than you would like if you had, for example, Heal. Because Heal gives you like a low boost of like movement speed and also extra HP. But Ghost really helps you, you know, like get out of those like dire situations that you wouldn't normally uh, have the opportunity with like uh, here. True. If that makes sense. True. Yeah, that makes complete sense. I just need to be careful that I don't find myself, that I don't maneuver myself in situations which I think are favorable because I'm used to having heal, uh, only to then uh, get killed. <laughs> yeah. Me personally, like when I take Ghost, I feel a lot safer than I would with like heal, for example, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, with everything, you need to get used to it. Muscle memory is a thing in League of Legends, of course, and I need to hope it doesn't bite me in the back here. Yeah. But, but we will manage. Let's take a look at uh, at enemy team comp. This is something we need to we need to consider too, because right now we're in a meta where junglers really really like to do three camps and two bot. So how do you how do you play against that? Well. Um, I usually when I when I notice a jungler is giving me a lot of attention, I try to keep them interested so they waste their time and my team gets ahead as, as a result. But um, of course, there's a thin line between doing that and just inting. <laughs> sure. But yeah, how what would you recommend? Well, it really depends, right? Because if you're pushing three waves into the turret, that basically means that you have to get back as fast as possible, especially because you're against a Jenna. This Jenna probably is playing with Glacial Augment, isn't she? Jenna is having Eerie. Okay. That's good, actually. So because she's she's not playing with Glacial Augment, like her W into Flash Q is not going to slow you down to like Oblivion. The good thing is that you also have Ghost, so if you're able to really get the, the push here, which is kind of unlikely because you don't have a ranged support and you also um, don't really have as much wave clear as Zaya does. So 
if you're just staying on like under turret, like it should be it should be no problem. Kha'Zix is a jungler that can really punish people that are getting far ahead in their lanes. And yeah. He also has ghosts. So this is also this is also like uh you know the good thing. Because he's not running like for example like Dark Harvest or First Strike, etc. Even if he ganks you, he's not gonna do as much damage. Also, I still have a Blitzcrank who can peel for me with his own Glacial Augment. That is true. So right now, like, we have a pretty safe gank setup in the sense that it's going to be really hard for them to, like, kind of gank you. And the only threat in, in teamfight is going to be, like, the Orin combo with, like, Silas. Silas can use Syndra ult or, or Viego ult or even your ult. This is what you kind of have to be careful of. Yeah. But is in theory, Zaya Janna is kind of weak like in the early game. In an ideal world, their game plan revolves around using Zaya's wave clear to push me in to create a CS advantage over time while also avoiding Bitscrank, grab and ganks from my jungler, mm. I would say. This kind of looks like a remake though. <laughs> the game's the... Yeah, the loading Hopefully. screen was very long. Hopefully it's not. We'll see what happens. So this is the build I would go this game, by the way. Seems seems good. Yumu's really strong option. Essence Reaver for mana. Yeah, everything's fine here. The only thing, the only decision I need to make is uh, when do I buy boots and do I upgrade them? And if yes, when? I would say in this game, depends on how aggressive the enemy jungler is camping us. Mm. How early I get tier one boots, and I don't think I would like to upgrade them in this game if I can help it. Yeah, we we want to prioritize as much AD as possible. Yeah, Misfortune is in this weird spot where she doesn't really have boots that match her all that perfectly because, well, she she wants lethality and attack damage and there are no lethality boots, there are no attack damage boots. And she has movement speed in her W, so she doesn't really need that either. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes, I, I'm not sure, sometimes I think, for example, when you're against Ash, um, boots of swiftness can really help, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to talk about the, the Swifties, but yeah, essentially you don't really have any kind of boots that are just perfect for Misfortune, you're right? Yeah. <clears throat> Can go defensive boots if, you know, Kha'Zix is getting fed or Zaya is getting, like, a, a few picks here and there. We'll see what happens. First of all, uh, enemies leashing, I guess. Okay, there they are. So I'll just focus okay. on CS for now, wait for Blitzcrank openings. Yeah. Top lane is missing. Looks like it's a remake, actually. Could be. Guess we'll find out in a second. Ah, took poke damage. Oh, he's back. We'll push for level 2 here. Let's we'll see what happens. Here getting the push is actually really good. We do have a Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank is really strong against Janna. Okay, all that did was cost me minions because I tried to capitalize off the level 2. All fine. Do I ward here or do I wait? Oh, uh, you can wait. Kha'Zix shouldn't be here just yet. And Kha'Zix okay, we see Kha'Zix near uh, chickens. Yeah. In theory, Kha'Zix should not be able to to kill you guys like ever as, as level three. And we're getting some good poke damage on the Janna. So right now we're we are allowed to play aggressively, which is good. Yeah, I took some damage back though. I would say I should ward soon-ish, right? Not yet. We know Kha'Zix is on, is on red right now, so we're okay. in no danger whatsoever. Like this, this ward from Blitzcrank is kind of useless because we know exactly where Kha'Zix is, right? Yeah, I mean it's a kind of preemptive ward if you get caught in a or if you get locked in a situation later on and can't really afford to. Ooh, Janna is mm -hmm. positioning so aggressively though. She wants to punish me for this. Yep. Oh, I don't have heal. I don't have heal. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I think she just kills you here. Ah, I thought I could just all in and win with heal. <laughs> Alright, let's get the long sword. It's fine. Let's get back into lane. Potion or not? We can get uh, one potion, yeah. Uh, 
Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Zaya is both of the sums, so this is actually good for you. Diego is really, really strong against uh, when he has like a Blitzcrank support. Yeah, and, I mean, essentially the situation ended up neutral because Viego got the revenge kill. Hmm. This guy is not really hitting his hooks too much. But yeah, like even if even if Blitz like hits like a like a hook or something, that's not go too crazy because Zaya can burst you like really really fast, right? Yeah, she has strong disengage. Definitely something we need to keep in mind. Also post 6, when I ult after Blitzcrank finds the engage, she can just ult back and she's untargetable. Yep. Ah. Couldn't really get these minions. Sorry, we're not like in a, in a depressing scenario right now. We're still... Yeah, it's fine. Zaya is currently recalling. Should I just push and recall myself? I think Jana is just gonna freeze, so I would just slow push. We know Kha'Zix is about side right now, though, so we don't want to go too crazy with the push. If we look at Diego's positioning, we know that Kha'Zix is bot side. Okay. How do you know that Kha'Zix is bot side? Because currently Diego is top side, and Kha'Zix actually started bot side, right? So okay, we see him right now. And he is near this crank. Yep. I know you can't push, because if you do, you're most likely gonna die. Yeah, I just need to hope they push, because I'm 1v2. See, this is, one of, this is what I was talking about, like, kind of adapting to, to what's going on. Oh god, am I dead? Yeah, you, I think you are, actually. There we go. I take it. Good, and Zaya should die too. We get the sorry to Dirk. Dirk plus boots or Dirk plus longsword? I would get uh, longsword. Just oh. because like this this early game power is like kind of needed, especially like you know boots is not really necessary, like in the very early game when you want to kind of take over the game. So my reasoning and would be I, I don't have flash, I don't have ghost. Maybe boots will help me. <laughs> but uh, I'm. I'm also happy with the longsword, of course. You know you're happy with the longsword. 80 scalings, misfortune, <laughs> first damage. Yeah. Why right, not try not to push the wave too much? Just try to last it. I tried to get a Q bounce onto Janna, who was mm. feeling sneaky in the bush, so this is why I went for that. You see, the reason as to why we don't want to push the lane right now is because we have both Diego and Bloodscrank coming in right up, so yep. you actually want them to push, and you want to create the impression of you're vulnerable. Okay, there we go. Let's try and find this. Come on, this crank. Didn't work. Don't go too crazy. Remember to disengage. I'm getting flamed, man. That's alright. Just ignore it. <clears throat> oh well, I'll just sit back for now. Next yeah. opportunity I might be able to ER them if Blitzcrank lands a hook. I mean, so far he hasn't hit like any hooks, yeah. so I wouldn't really count There that. we go. I take back what I said. Good job, Blitzcrank. You took the kill though. That's sad. Oh, that's fine. I mean, as long as enemy is off the map, that's still good for us. <laughs> Kha'Zix should be in theory topside, but he could be bot side. Right now, it, it would make sense for him to go to his uh, red. That's good, actually. There we go. Okay. Well, just Kha'Zix as Kha'Zix is there. Yeah. Kha'Zix That's what I like. If, if your support finds the engage, misfortune is such an easy time following up. I was definitely more happy to commit my ult attacking Janna than. I gotta be careful because. Kha'Zix could jump over. Yeah, that's true. Right now you just want to focus on the minions. Whoa. This Blitzcrank is very aggressive with his stuff. I'd like to just get the cannon and get out of here. Yeah, I, I just recall. For sure. 
Yo, I have 100% death participation. Is that good? <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, no longer. Someone died. Too sad. So here, longsword plus boots? Yeah. Okay, Drake for us. 8 to 3. Looking good. Diego was able to pick up early kills. We also have a pretty good Snowloy setup. The good thing is that because Blitzcrank went for this roam, we were able to get solo XP. And because we were able to get solo XP, we were able to get 6. And because you hit a hook, you were able to ulti, put them, put both of them to like low HP and capitalize on that. Yeah. Which is good, of course. Try to slow push as much as possible because you want them to lose as many minions as possible. All right. Right now, Blitzcrank is going for roam. This so again, I should fast push, right? I would still slow push it. Okay. I'll just lose farm now uh, because 1v2. We're now in a position where we can really fast push here. Okay. I mean, you, you could potentially ult for it, but it's not really worth it, right? Ah, uh, I bounced onto the cannon. That's not good. I will lose it. Or not. <laughs> Got it. Taking so much damage in the 1v2. Anyway, at least now they push, so I can collect the wave under tower. And if Blitzcrank gets, well, an advantage on the other side of the map, I wanted to say, but <laughs> that's not where he is. I'm just sitting back here. There's nothing I can do. Or what you recommend here? I mean, I would just sit back and relax. There's nothing you can really do, right? Yeah, I just, I just, just lose like, the wave, and that's the end of the story. Uh, you just adapt to what's going on, essentially. Yeah. Because you're... Because you're misfortune, you're very vulnerable. Uh, I tried to bait her out, but she still got the hit on me. I just wanted to give Blitzcrank an opening there. Good shot. If only he had knocked up the Janna. Uh, okay. Well, that's my support for you. <laughs> You'll get a lot of those those kind of supports. Zaya will can can burst you out with flash, by the way. I feel so unsafe even. without heal, by the way. Yeah. Diego is here, though. So with heal, I'd be so forward. confident right now. You want to look tasty. Okay, I, I try to bait this, but Janna, of course, has the damage, and now I lose all these minions. That's so rough. I sell potion, and wait for Yomos, right? Yeah, that's the be that's the better choice here. Okay, the good thing is that now, like, if Blitzcrank wants to play around us, we have Yomus, we have Ghosts, so we can really look to to hard punish Zaya. Zaya's ult is on is on cooldown, so you really yeah. want to ping Zaya ult, you want to ping your Ghost, and then you basically want to tell Blitzcrank, get your ass in here, like, we're gonna get him. I really hope that this Ghost pays off later uh, on, because right now all I'm missing yeah. is my heal. <laughs> yeah. It's something you have to get used to, but once you get used to it, like, it's very, very strong. I mean, there's a reason why every pro player is taking those, right? Yeah, because they're in pro play and not in solo queue. Yes, but it's also because of the better choice, like, in team fight, right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still skeptical, but I, I allow myself to be convinced here. Let's see. Okay. Uh, right now the wave just... is frozen against me, what am I supposed to do? We're supposed to just wait. Just wait and lose experience, or or we could we could potentially go mid here. To be honest, I yeah. know it sounds true, but let's do it. Oh wait, my character stopped moving. Right now, Zaya is just freezing. Like there's nothing. Yeah, we'll just siege this tower. Who cares? Well, Zaya is just gonna freeze, and Blitzcrank is refusing to play with us. So we gotta get an opportunity somewhere else, right? Yeah, this siege looks nice. Maybe we can give the Herald another charge. I almost have enough mana for E plus R if it comes to that, so I don't use W here. Messias is in in the same situation as we are on bot side, right? Now Orn is here. We have full prior on Drake. They have broken the freeze, finally. 
I'll just go botling and collect the farm. I really have to. Push out the wave now. We do lose an entire wave, but you know, at the same time, there's nothing much to do. Except, Did we really like, lose the wave if staying bot lane wouldn't have granted us the wave anyway? <laughs> that's true. It, it's it's gone point. no matter what, so. I right now you really want to be there, so you want to go for Drake. We lose this farm. We have Misfortune R. It's really needed. Yeah, I'll for go Drake there. Fight. Maybe we can make something happen. Beautiful. Let's pop ghosts. The ghost power. I think I'm dead, huh? Or am I? I'm just slow it forever. Oh, I can't chase into fog of war. Actually, the ghost paid off here, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I survived at least. Maybe we can grab Jenna, or is the twin cooldown? On ghost crank? We can. Oh. Nice. Oh, might die here actually. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I, I know Very my stats, close. right? <laughs> yeah. You had everything planned from the start. But of course, I'm right. I'm uh, harvesting these flame pings. What else? It's just a classic US experience. It's fine. Unstoppable. I don't upgrade trinket yet. I don't think. Let's just go like this. Oh, Fiora. Here you kind of had a preview of like how how Ghost could be utilized, and you see like yeah. it was really hard going this team fight actually. Yeah, I guess if you're once you get a hang of it and muscle memory doesn't fool you anymore, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Because right now I'm still I'm I'm autopiloting more than usual because I'm talking to you, obviously. So um. And you're doing great. Even while autopiloting, it's good. Yeah, so, so I mean uh, the situations I created in the early game were all according to my heal muscle memory, which then got me killed. <laughs> but uh, I guess once you get the ghost muscle memory going, it should be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like a no-brainer, right? You have a team fight, you're just popping ghost, and you're essentially like... Yeah. Playing kind of like a, like a Lilia. I don't it's know if it's you very one-dimensional decision-making. Team fight, yes, no. Yes, ghost, no. No ghost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, hello, Kha'Zix. Nice to meet you. Okay, I even popped Ghost Bait, but didn't need to. Wasn't sure how much they would run away. Oh god. We have Flash. I just got myself killed, I guess. I think we should be fine here. Try I to just wait, got like, Spiegel killed, I guess. <laughs> try to wait a little bit more for your ult. Yeah, try to, uh, in to get Viego into a safe spot by ulting. But yeah, the ultimately just you allowing that... Use your, the way you want to use your ult is not to save others, but to get yourself more head. It's the same with like Kale ult, for example. Like, The rule of thumb with Kale is that after level 11, like you don't want to use uh, ult on anyone else but yourself, because... You know, you're very vulnerable with that ult on yourself. I see. Okay, it's might not get killed here. by Orn here. Orn doesn't or by Kha'Zix. I just goes by the way. Okay, no ult. Not, not much we can really do here, unfortunately. Apart from getting the cannon that we're not getting. Unlucky. Alright. We get the Essence Reaver here. Do we need to stay? Mm, Maybe. Good, yeah. We have ult in 20, we have ghost. Let's just not get ourselves killed. Alright, now you just want to play really, really passive aggressive. Ah, okay, I just, I just popped ghost because go. I thought they needed my follow up. I mean, it ended up working out, right? I don't think this orange is gonna die. We'll Except see. Up, ghost active. Yeah, okay, Janna saves him. We don't have mana for ults, that's kind of unfortunate. You do now? Get him. He might die, actually. Oop. No it's mind. all calculated. It's fine. He's dead. Nice. I'll keep going. They're all, they're all off the map, so I can push mid lane tower. Actually, let's get this plan to make this a little safer. 
I think without the plan it was still fine, but let's just get this turret and then back. We're gonna have enough gold for our second item. Yeah, plenty. Perfect. And now we just back. We can also get the blue trinket. Yeah, we need to um, we need to hurry because Drake spawns in half a minute. Yeah. So you want to make sure to keep your. Essentially, like right now, you want to look for a good positioning, like in team fights. I would probably go LDR to be honest. This game. LDR over... right now. Yeah, of course we will go LDR, yeah. but uh, a quick collector. I feel like I feel like LDR would be better this game just because you know Silas is building HP. Uh, Breezer Kazix. Against Silas, Jenna, we don't we go have... more to reminder with Moonstone and Godrinka and everything? I mean, the way she's building right now doesn't seem like she's actually going for, for that. This guy is out of the Come fight. again? We get What's more break. important? The oh, oh, wait, I need to focus. I'm sorry. <laughs> focus, focus. Nice. We have ult. Yeah, ult's ready, but the situation isn't quite yet. Oh, that's big. Okay, keep auto attacking. Keep hitting them. Very nice. You have ult for Jenna? Okay, that was overkill, I... but it, it's got Orn out of his hiding spots. Maybe we can clean up too. Oh, he's staying. He's so greedy. He's so dead. Nah, I think he's alive. Okay, maybe. Team gets dragon, we get the tower. Okay, so what was what was you about to say? Or what were you about to say? Essentially, like, you'll get more value out of people, like, for example, when they're starting to stack a lot of HP and they have, like, something like uh, Soraka, Janna, Sona, etc. You get more value out of LDR than you get out of Collector. I mean, uh, LDR versus Motor Reminder here. Oh, you mean, like, Motor Reminder? Yeah, exactly, LDR because of better. Gordrink and because of Janna's Moonstone. I still, I still think you get more value out of LDR. Anti-healing is kind of like a trap item, to be honest. You think so? Yeah. In every situation? It's only, it's only really good in certain situations. Like, we're talking about super overhealing, right? But in this scenario, we don't have, like, very, like, overhealing champions, right? Do you recommend like I still commit now that I have the pickaxe to the collector, or do I just pivot into... I would, I would still go collector, just because you have the pickaxe, right? Yeah. But you could you could still go for uh, the armor pen here. Yeah, th uh, this is why I stayed for extra wave so I can get last whisper. Yeah, last whisper is still really good because right now you have lethality and you also have armor pen, so you're going to be dealing a lot more damage than you would be if you went for uh, serrated dirk. Yeah, I mean last whisper is kind of necessary against Orn first and foremost. Sure. Okay, so I guess I pop my ghost blade. Try to gap the gap close. But my team probably doesn't need me here, right? Okay, We're crushing them. The actually, against this team comp, like, Cyril does would actually be good. It's it's more supportive than LDR, and I don't think your team really needs more damage here. What do you think? Cyril does on Misfortune is kind of a trap. Yes, your Q now slows and your ult too, but, it, well, you mainly... Oh, I pop ghost here, right? He already knows. <laughs> That's so funny. Almost. Oh, so close. He's so tanky, actually. Almost, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Imagine if I have Cyrildas. <laughs> well, uh, if I have Cyrildas, I don't kidding. have Essence Reaver. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, let's get Nashers. Yeah, I'm, I'm in general, right now, the state in which the Wildas is, I'm not the biggest fan of Misfortune. Yes, the haste is nice and the stat profile too, but... Um, for this build, we're yeah, going yeah. for crit in the late game, and also the slow is really redundant when you have E. It's kind of it's kind of situational, right? Because if you look at your team, you have top lane damage, jungle damage, mid damage, and of course your damage. And you know, like if you were if you had like a full peeling team comp, we're talking about you know like an Ibern, and we're talking about you know like Malakai support, Blitzcrank, whatever. Yeah. Like it would make sense for you to be the carry and have like that extra damage, but because we already have like so much damage. It would be better to kind of, to kind of go for a mix of like um, supportive and damage, right? So Cyril does, you know, Rylize, etc. All those items are kind of supportive in the sense that you know, like they slow for your team comp, but you still also do like some damage if that makes sense. That's true, but almost fortune. I mean, slows don't stack, so you mainly just use your E for that. 
Mm. I mean, in general, the item Cyril does is... The slow, you don't buy, you never buy it for the slow on Misfortune, I would say. But maybe I undervalue the slow you get on your R and on your Q. Your team is... We're just crushing it here. Yeah, no questions they're... asked. What's Kha'Zix gonna do? Sit there and watch. I mean, Kha'Zix was crushed in the early game. Went for a full clear on Kha'Zix. He didn't respect the meta. His fault. Yeah, we're gonna just take this inhibitor here. I mean, it's game over. Silas Orn down. There's nothing they can do. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty so. sure we finish here. Oh yeah. The low wave clear. Get yeah, especially for the in. zone, so they can't walk up to their tower. It's just over. We just end. Get him. Get the LP. Nice. Perfect. All right. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, I can kind of see the merits of ghosts over heal. Did you kind of heal it sometimes? Huh? Did you feel it? Yeah, the, the, the power of ghost was definitely there in team fights, but you gotta be careful in the early game. That's my takeaway here. <laughs> mm. You know, the way, the way I use ghost like in the early game is more aggressively in a sense that you know like if the if your opponent is kind of looking for a fight i just like pop ghosts so i can kind of go in and out and they're kind of reluctant on kind of trade because they're like oh she popped ghost okay i'm not i'm gonna chill but you can still get like some extra auto attacks in and get that advantage that can really snowball like uh, in the early it's definitely more of an aggressive setup but it's still like it definitely still has its merits yeah i see the reason why I personally take it, like in my games, is mostly due to the fact that you know, like I'm I'm a very aggressive player, so I will I will have more value out of ghost than, for example, like taking heal, where I'm just kind of you know like looking for those quick trades and you know try to get like an advantage out of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, ghost is more snowbally, I guess. Mm. Which is like a little bit better for for solo queue. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's ultimately, I guess it. Well, if pro players are taking it, there definitely is something to it. But um, mm. the most important thing is getting used to it first. I would say. Yeah, and I kind of I kind of feel like you were adapting yourself to like the ghost, like um, in some of uh, in some of those games. I feel like you know, misfortune is not necessarily champion that really relies on ghosts too much and i don't yeah. see like even pro players I, I wouldn't necessarily say that a lot of pro players do take ghost but that's because they're playing like in a really high low environment right if you're playing like in top kr challenger or you know top us challenger like you're not going to find as much value because people are going to be much better at hitting their scale shot etc so you're mostly looking to go for either cleanse or maybe even uh, maybe even a heal or or exhaust in those situations right but the value that i do see out of ghost is like it is just so much better like in uh in team fights or um during like for your own personal use right yeah also keeps you safe very similar to exhaust in the mid and late game but instead of just duking it out with the assassin who jumps on you you just run away <laughs> exactly Okay, so what did we what did we take off of this? Like, how did you play like a little bit differently, like than you usually would? Um, so you mean in this game or going forward? I mean, in this game and going forward, yeah. Yeah. So, well, a key takeaway, of course, is that um, well, I said earlier, I'm an old school player and I like my heal, but maybe just exploring these different options uh, is not a bad idea per se, even if you like your previous options a lot. Um, that's definitely something I I can take away from this. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to selecting the builds, that certainly aspects you've mentioned that I have turned a blind eye towards before, for example, um, how the matchup is, or how the matchups are going beyond the lane phase. Um, well, my my reasoning came from a perspective of lane phase is everything, which I still believe to some degree, because solo queue is heavily decided by tilt, and if you can just win lane, 
chances are the enemy is not even trying anymore. So, um, but I mean, the other matchups still exist and you still need to keep them in mind. Stomping the lane only gets you so far if the enemy, Kha'Zix, for example, goes 10 and 0 in the mid game and now you don't have a game plan against them, then uh, that's also a problem which needs to be solved for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, all those minor things. Also, what you said about jungle tracking, when to ward, um, when to hold on to your ward because you know what the jungler is technically and stuff like that. This is also something I have not really been paying attention to too much mm -hmm. in the past. Especially when it comes to the jungler in lane, my playstyle was very reactive and not really trying to rely on my predictions, which might also hold me back long term, of course. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the key moments that we can really talk about this game uh, specifically are the adep the adaptability of um, of like what you're doing inside the game. So, for example, you know, like you can't actually control what the blitzkrieg is gonna do. If the yeah. blitzkrieg wants to go mid or top. Then you actually have no choice but to give up the minions. And you know, as we know, Misfortune is really, really reliant on on the support. So if she doesn't have the support, there's actually nothing you can do. So here you have two choices, right? The first choice is just chill under your turret and not do anything. The second choice would just be to like e ulti the wave. Yeah. And as much as it sounds troll, like because of your support, you know, roaming and you not being able to do anything, that would be the smartest choice, in my opinion. You know, like, giving up your OT for, like, a wave or two is 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 very, like, it's it's worth it in the long run, right? Because you can't, you can't actually do anything. But, you know, like, Blitzkrieg still played for his team. He got the Viego ahead. He, he was able to, like, some rooms that were, like, successful. So, you know, like, game-wise, it's good. For you, it was bad, right? Yeah. So that's that's the first thing we can take out of this. The second thing is obviously the jungle tracking. You know, like it also really helps to be like uh, to kind of understand the jungle from uh, your own perspective in the sense that you know it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to play like maybe five or ten games of jungle and like really understand you know like uh, jungle tracking and like how the enemy jungle uh, plays, how to really track the enemy jungle. Because yeah. as you, as an ADC, even if you don't play jungle, that's completely fine. You, you can still play, you know, Ramus, Amumu, whatever, and still, like, kind of understand, you know, like, the decision between uh, behind their movements, right? For example, if they're playing a Lee Sin, then they're going to be gank heavy, so you know that they're probably going to gank a bot after three camps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here, you know, like, we're able to see that Kha'Zix started blue, and then, you know, he went topside after a full clear. And then we were able to track Kha'Zix, like, maybe 90% of the time. You know, remember, I was like, here, I know Kha'Zix is bot side. And he was bot. You know, I, I know that Kha'Zix is probably going to be top side, So we can just chill and hold on onto a ward. And that made sense, you know? Like, ward... Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it, it really makes sense. Uh, the same reasoning for, you know, AD carry players are usually very good support players simply because they spend so much time with the support position or with the support player themselves, they know what they need to do or to make their AD carry excel if they play support. So if I just play jungle a couple of games, I would also um, probably gain valuable insights into how jungle pathing works more intuitively and then transfer those skills to my AD carry gameplay by being able to anticipate what the jungler tries to do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It, it really it really helps out in your own games. It's like really understanding the game and you know like you were like what, should I ward here or not? And my my answer like would be 100% no because we know exactly where the enemy jungle is and yeah. we know exactly where the enemy jungler is going to be headed 30 seconds or 1 minute uh in the future, right? It because we knew that Kha'Zix was on Krugs, we basically he basically has two choices here. His first choice is immediately recalling and going into bot. Then the ward would be useful like 30 seconds later. Or we see Kha'Zix topside, which we did. So we don't actually need to ward. And we do have like, you know, valuable information on the map, right? And that mm -hmm. keeps you safe. That basically makes you able to, okay, here um I can go in, here I can play aggressive, here I can do this and that, right? Um, the way the way you played the lane was pretty good, except the, the level the level three death. But that's because you know you weren't used to like um, play without without your. Without yeah, your I thought heal. I could just I could just fight this with press the attack and heal, but heal was nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, 
I guess that's that's okay, right? We yeah, it happens. We still, made, we still made good use of ghost. Like there were like two or three instances where you just pop ghost, and you were able to get like remember like those two, three, four uh, extra auto attacks, and you were able to like also get away from like one team fight safely. Yeah, especially in that one team like, fight where I was able to just run away from the threats. That was very valuable. Yeah, I, I kind of saw that. I was like, holy crap, he's going in. But yeah. That's, uh, I think that was pretty productive, actually. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. So going in the future, like, what are we going if you, to... If you really wanted to climb, so right now we're in D2, if you wanted to climb to Masters and above, like, how would you, how would you improve yourself? So, um, I mean, right now I'm in D2, but we need to keep in mind um, I haven't played many games and many were with experimental builds. Um, yeah. So I could probably just climb to master by playing more. Um, yeah. But, I mean, if I want to improve, I should definitely... The first thing I uh, would do is... I, I would say I will do if I were a long-term student of yours, but I'm not sure how much time I can dedicate to climbing this season uh, or in the near future. Anyway, if I were to try hard and climb, my takeaway mm -hmm. from this session is the next thing I would do is I would play 10 games of jungle, just get a decent understanding of the role, because that's right now, uh, it's, it's, I, I don't have an intuitive understanding of jungle pathing and of, um, of, of rotations and, and clear times, clear speeds, whatnot. So I would get that going, so I can then uh, use that to manage my lane phase better as an AD carry, to know when to ward, to know when to play aggressive, when to play defensive, not just reactively, but proactively. So this is the very first thing I would do. That's good. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good mindset. Understanding jungle tracking would be very valuable for you. Like in the early game, die less and get more kills. Yeah. That's already like a big up. The second thing I would look to do that you don't do a lot from personally, like what I've seen is your, is your wave management. It says that, you know, there's not, a lot of thought and understanding when it comes to like your own wave management like a lot of times you know you were like uh here i'm gonna fast push here i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna i'm not even gonna freeze you know i'm just gonna hard push hard push hard push what you need to keep in mind is that most of the time you know like as an adc you want to be like slow pushing as much as possible because this is what essentially keeps you safe if you're ever gonna get ganked or if your opponent is trying to trade with you because mm -hmm. if you're building up like a big wave, they're going to be really reluctant to like kind of trade with you. Because if they do trade with you, you have the mini advantage. But what you also need to uh, to keep in mind is that if you have a big wave stacked and they trade with you, you're able to trade back. And even if you if you deal like for example like fifty percent HP of theirs and they do like fifty percent HP of yours, you're gonna have a big advantage. And that advantage is like for example dying for for a kill under turret because if you're if you're able to do that they essentially lose their entire lane right yeah and that's you know that's something to like really like understand um you know when to freeze how to freeze how to slow push when to slow push when to hard push etc most of the time you do not want to hard push except if for example like they get killed or you know like they're roaming on the map or they're now present and you can get like some platings like those are the moments where you want to hard push you want to hard push to deny the minions you want to slow push to deny the minions you want to freeze to deny minions right yeah denying xp denying gold is a victory for you of course right? yeah farm is everything on ad carry from my experience exactly if you don't get farm you you're, you're not adc for a long time yeah so so yeah, that's that. Do you have like any questions? Um, well, considering it's only been one session, I haven't really had time to develop questions over the course yeah. of the of the coaching. But um, I appreciate that you ask because I think this is a this is a very valuable part of the equation. Yeah. But right now, no, I think I think uh, the the action plan is already laid out. Uh, in my position, if I wanted to climb as high as possible, learn jungle, be more aware in the lane phase of the wave, and get ghost muscle memory. <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, keep in mind again that it's not necessarily needed to go ghost every single game. Yeah, it's of just course. That in this scenario, it, it it was nice to go for it, right? Because it's it's kind of if you if you look at their team comp, right? It's really hard for them to kind of get on top of you, right? Kazix is full bruiser; he's not an assassin, and uh, then you have Jana that needs to run at you. you have you have Zaya that needs to run at you, so. Actually, Ghost is good for like every single of their chance. But if they have something like, for example, like a Rengar or, you know, like, um, I don't know, a Zerath or something else that... I mean, to be fair, know, we couldn't see in Champ Select that Kha'Zix was going to go Bruiser. True, 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 true. But still, like, there's still kind of ways for you to kind of deal with that. You know, like, for example, yeah. like staying next to your minions and, you know, Kha'Zix still needs to get on top of you and Ghost kind of allows you to get away from him. As for heal, you know, it just gives you like an extra boost of like MS that he can match with his own ult. Yeah, true. Yeah, the, so the Ghost why... muscle memory thing was also more like a proxy for be open to new options and to uh, metagame developments, you know? Yeah. Of course, true. I'm still going to k take cleanse if I'm against a Varus ADC plus Ash support bot lane or something. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, I yeah, think... definitely um, another tool in the skill set if you are, uh, if you have Ghost in your repertoire, essentially. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we can uh, we can edit here. It was, it was great having you. And, yeah, thank uh, you very much for the session. Thank you for your time. And I hope I just the, the viewers also now um, have a clearer picture uh, in their minds of what to expect if they take up these coaching calls. Exactly. Yeah. And I wanted and to mention one thing um, of course. About, about Solo Queue Solution. Like we're launching on the on the twenty eighth of November. Yes. And I will I can't wait to like have pretty much all of you guys like have those calls and have a coaching underneath. So exciting, so man. I will definitely keep the audience updated on YouTube. Cool. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And I think I'll right. stop the recording uh, here. <laughs> Cool, cool.